Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. No matter how far removed we may think we are from our upbringings, the past always has a way of catching up to us in one way or another. Sometimes it's bumping into a childhood friend at the store, a postcard from a long-lost relative, and sometimes it's a strange man trying to hack you to death with a machete. Currently streaming on Shudder, Impetigore is the latest folk horror film from Indonesian filmmaker Joko Anwar, telling the tale of Maya, a toll booth worker stuck in a rut. What begins as another mundane evening manning her booth is interrupted when a strange man approaches her. He begins incessantly inquiring about her name, her family, and the village she's from. After threatening to call the police, the man leaves, only to return moments later, brandishing a machete and attempting to kill Maya. It's a suddenly shocking beginning that sets the tone of Impentagore's narrative as one that is shrouded in secrecy and can escalate at a moment's notice. After barely surviving the attack, Maya tracks down her ancestral family's village with her best friend, Dinny, to uncover the reasoning behind her being targeted. Once they arrive, they discover Maya's family come from wealth, and she inherits their mansion that towers over the village huts. Though, with this new home comes a steep price that Maya and Dinny will pay for dearly. Joko Anwar spends his time developing Maya and Dinny's relationship through their trials and tribulations. Through thick and thin mundane tollbooth jobs and failing small business ventures, these two stick together through the worst of times. This bond makes them easy to feel for and makes the viewer want them to find the light at the end of the hellish tunnel that Anwar sends them down. As Maya and Dinny investigate the village, they uncover strange and unexplainable oddities. For starters, there are no children, and the village graveyard is filled with numerous child graves. There is also the local village celebrity puppeteer, Ki Saptadi, who the women want to question about Maya's past. From the outset, Saptadi feels more like a ruler rather than just a simple puppeteer. The villagers hold on to his every word, his word seemingly being the law of the land. The secrecy revolving around the village and those living there not taking kindly to strangers stems from an old curse that has been placed upon the village. Maya and Dinny learn a mysterious curse somehow originating from Maya's family plagues the village, ensuring that children are born without skin and are in a state of perpetual agony. Though, once the village learns of Maya's identity, they descend on the pair and attempt to end the curse that has caused them pain for so long. Anwar evenly handles the balancing of Impentagore's folklore horror through adequately establishing its characters, the village's atmosphere, as well as appropriately distributing its disturbing gore. There's a Silent Hill-esque fog and mystery that suffocates the entire woodland village. From the set dressings to conveying the smoldering secrets that lay just beneath the surface through unease and tension. And Pentagore is a powder keg of folklore terror. One element that Joko Anwar makes palpable for the audience better than most folklore horror does is humanizing the villagers hunting Maya. While you never necessarily root for them over Maya, who is the source of their pain though at no fault of her own, you cannot help but sympathize with them. In the two decades since Maya has left their village, they've been grief-stricken at the deaths of countless children, as well as having their faith pushed to its breaking point. Now, the village leaders who are manipulating the villagers' grief, they're another matter. And if anything, having a central antagonist helps to steer Maya's anger and hate away from those corrupted by trauma. This even handling continues in the film's scares which range from shocking moments of violence to a tepid instance or two of ghostly little girls appearing suddenly to haunt Maya. It is the perfect balance for a folklore horror film that primarily focuses on an atmosphere that suffocates with its potential for danger that complements the already disturbing ritualistic acts. And disturbing rituals there are. First, on several occasions were shown the first-hand result of the curse, that being newborns born without skin which upon being born, the villagers drown as a form of mercy killing, which is, yeah, pretty fucking brutal every single time it happens. They also discover that the puppets the puppeteer uses to perform shows for the village are made from the flesh of people who have been slaughtered. On top of being a sickening discovery, the subtext for the deeper meaning of these items and the mystery wrapped up in their creation further facilitates Impentagore's overall disdain for humanity. And Maya is the perfect protagonist to be faced with such a world of disdain. Maya's suffering consequences she inherited is intertwined into Anwar's ruminating on family and tradition that adds a complementing poignancy to the skin-crawling realities of the film's world. Without Anwar's atmospheric and disregard for those being preyed upon, this would have been your average woodland folk horror film. And while the resolution is a bit muddled in its ham-fisted plot twist, the film overall sets itself apart from, and is a standout amongst, folk horror films. It also has one of the most brutal and shocking stingers of any recent horror movie, so I highly recommend sticking with it to the end. 
Maya's painful journey in uncovering her traumatic past is one of perseverance in the face of unfathomable odds. Actress Tara Basro gives not only a physical performance, but easily conveys a woman stricken by injustices that she has inherited. We feel her initial need to learn about her past, only to switch gears into full-on survival mode. She's a protagonist that puts her friends and others in need before herself, making her an instantly likable character that we can't help but root for. And Pentagore is an easy recommendation to anyone who is a fan of folk horror such as May the Devil Take You, The Hallow, and The Witch. And that's going to do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.